This is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Rebecca Vargas. And I'm Stephanie Roberts in for Don Brennan. Thanks for joining us on a Tuesday morning. John, I hear we had some record heat 96. yesterday. Oh, yeah, I know. That's Sweltering. horrible. I mean, normal is hot enough, but now <laughs> yeah. we have to have above normal and record. Yeah, 96 and humid. So, you yeah, know, what are you going to bring it I all had a on? Feeling. It yeah. was really hard to get out of the it's car. It's not the heat, it's the heat and the humidity. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's, uh, it's still warm yeah. this morning. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. sticky out there. And you know what? All that heat and humidity will combine together this afternoon to bring us another round of pretty strong storms, it looks like. Some of the storms producing some fairly heavy rainfall once again. Already that easterly wind flow visible on our images of uh, radar echoes. You can see those moving from east to west across the state of Florida. They're trying to work their way closer to us, but right now it looks like the morning commute will be A-OK -okay in terms of any kind of rainfall. That'll hold off till later this afternoon. Then inland showers will build. And they'll gradually drift to the coast. Daytime high today, probably coming in around 94, 95 degrees for a daytime high. Complete forecast details coming up in a few. All right, thank you, John. And out on the roadways this morning, things are quiet at this early hour, but we do have plenty of uh, heat and humidity, as John mentioned. We are seeing already building volume on State Road 70 coming across Manatee County. It looks like in uh, both directions starting to see some slowdowns there, but we're not getting word of any accidents. I-75 looks good through Manatee County and the University Parkway and Fruitville construction zones. Building volume both directions of Fruitville Road as folks get up and at them this morning. Bee Ridge and Clark Roads are moving well. I-75 not showing any problems as we move down into South County and things are moving well on 41 as well. Topping our news this morning, at least seven are now dead and thousands of others rescued and evacuated from their homes as Louisiana continues to deal with severe flooding. Volunteers from the Sun Coast are now on the scene there helping those staying in shelters. ABC 7's Ray Collins has more. Give a dog. Your dog. Give if a picture speaks a thousand words, video speaks even more. I got you, dog. Oh. This is some drone video from high above Baton Rouge. The state has been swamped with rain, floods, and now damage and death. It's going to cost the Red Cross over $10 million. The executive director of the regional Red Cross off Cattleman Road says she dispatched five volunteers Monday afternoon to the disaster zone. Despite the daunting task ahead, she's proud the Suncoast can play a role. I've been at this for a long time, and every time we send folks out, I feel so proud and so grateful that we have volunteers that are willing to give up two or three weeks of their life to go help other people. Yes, Pauline. One of those volunteers helping other people is Linda Herzog. For the past dozen years, since she first came on board after Hurricane Charlie, Linda has been traveling around helping disaster victims, but not anymore. That's because the Red Cross began experimenting a few months ago with virtual caseworkers who, from their desks, help victims miles away. And it saves the Red Cross money. They don't have to pay for my travel, my room and board. Linda admits she misses being at the scene, but she says she can be nearly as effective with disaster victims from her office in Sarasota, talking to people she'll never meet. And a lot of times, that's all they want, is someone to talk to, so that they were not forgotten. Do you ever wish you were actually at the scene to give them a hug? Yes. Yes. And with tens of thousands out of their homes and the death toll still rising, you can bet a lot of victims will need hugs in Louisiana. Just like I did from Katrina, start all over again. Now, if you want to donate, call 800 Red Cross. In the newsroom, Ray Collins, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Ray. Back here on the Sun Coast, services will be held today for the woman who was shot and killed by a Punta Gorda police officer during a training exercise. Family and friends will gather to say their final goodbyes to Mary Knowlton. The memorial service starts at 2 this afternoon at the First United Methodist Church. Knowlton's son says he is still in shock over his mother's tragic death. It was just hysterical, you know, but I knew I had to keep my head, you know, as far as I got to there's more in me involved here. My dad needs us to be strong. An officer had at least one bullet in his gun during the demonstration that killed Knowlton last week. That officer is now on administrative leave pending an investigation. Grief counseling continues to be offered to the community. A Suncoast woman is sentenced to prison for her role in the smothering death of a six-year-old boy. Ashley Cole was sentenced to 13 years behind bars, followed by five years of probation and the death of six-year-old Jimmy Derman. 
Prosecutors say Cole and her boyfriend, 31-year-old James Dearman, were playing a video game last Christmas Eve when Jimmy and his sister began making what they say was too much noise. Both kids were told to put their nose on the wall, but when Jimmy didn't follow instructions, Cole called him to the couch and put his face into the cushions, and both she and Dearman sat on Jimmy's back while continuing to play video games. She had a childhood. Jimmy will never have any childhood. It's over. I don't know how to put in words how remorseful I am. I just want to do good. As part of her probation, Cole will have to undergo mental health and drug evaluations and 16 weeks of anger management. James Dearman was sentenced last month to 20 years in prison with 10 years probation. In Northport, the community is showing their support for our local first responders. The Northport Fire Department received a surprise gift of 7,000 bottles of water and a few hundred bottles of Gatorade. The effort was started by a Northport resident who spread the word on social media. I was shocked. I was amazed at all the people that were donating water. It was, the, the support was just amazing. People support our emergency services, our police and fire, our public works and utilities people. And, and it shows when they just do this spontaneously. And uh, we had no contact. We had no idea that this was going to happen today. Residents did the same thing for the police department a few weeks ago. They now plan on doing a food drive for a local pantry. Manatee County drivers with a suspended license have a reprieve next month. On September 9th, the county will offer its first ever driver's license reinstatement day. From noon to 5, anyone who has a suspended license for failure to pay for traffic citations that are in collections will be able to meet with staff to help them reinstate their license. Those interested must register before the event to determine their eligibility and schedule an appointment. Registration runs through this Friday and can be completed through the clerk's office on Manatee Avenue or through its website. In Sarasota County, a public meeting will be held tonight to go over four new bus routes being added to Sarasota County area transit. The bus routes will serve the Knights Trail Laurel Road area in Northport. It will begin November 12th. Other route changes in the Northport and Venice area include adding earlier departures for routes 9 and 13 and extending some services. The meeting will be held tonight from 5 to 630 at the Venice Community Center on Nokomis Avenue. Well, the Venice Art Center is about to see a major expansion. The center currently has several thousand art students, far too many for them to handle, and they've had to start turning people away. And that is about to change. ABC 7's Christopher Brantley has more. Carol Sikora is one of thousands of people who take art classes here at the Venice Art Center and can't wait to see a new building at it. I think a lot of people retire and there, there are things that they've wanted to do that they haven't had an opportunity to do in their life and they want to come down to start. Sakura isn't retired. In fact, she started working for the Art Center and now she's both a student and staff member. We've had to turn people away because the classes have been full, especially this past season. It seems every year we grow bigger and bigger, so we really have a demand for the space. For those lucky enough to get in, the art on the walls of the gallery tell their stories, especially those who thought they'd never make it. Some people have started painting here for the first time and end up having shows and putting things uh, in different galleries for display. Paul McCullough is the president of the Art Center Board. He tells us they've doubled in class size over the last four years, and to meet that demand, they're adding two new classrooms here on what is now a part of the parking lot. The expanded building is going to incorporate 1,800 square feet. It's going to have one bathroom and it's going to have two large classrooms. The new classrooms are expected to hold a number of multi-use art classes for people both young and old. The price tag? $240,000. But the center is getting some help, $50,000 in grants from the Marie Selby Foundation. Students taking classes do pay, although most of that money goes to paying for instructors, and some of it is being directed here, the rest of the tab they hope to fill from fundraising donations. This is going to be the beginning of a, of a permanent effort to increase and maintain our fundraising efforts. In Venice, Christopher Brantley, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Christopher. Well, with just days left of summer vacation in Sarasota County, students and teachers alike are getting ready for the new school year. But for one elementary school, you can expect to see some changes to start it off. One of Sarasota County's oldest schools, Fruitville Elementary, now has a modern addition, which will give some of its students a better learning atmosphere. Special needs students at the school now have a new 30,000 square foot 
18 classroom building that was recently completed. One teacher says the new furniture and equipment will be helpful for the school's autistic students. The furniture can easily be moved and reconfigured. Um, that's not something we had prior in trying to instruct them and, and work with their individual needs. I think that's going to help the instruction. Other new renovations on campus include improvements to the school's parking lot and a covered play area for students. Meanwhile, the school year is already underway in Manatee County, where there has also been a lot of changes. The Manatee County District was faced with many challenges this year, from teacher shortages to schools closing, plus students being transferred to other schools. Despite the changes this year, district officials say the first week went smoothly with minimal issues. I think it's going to be a good year. I think it's going to be better than last year. And, and that's what we can hope for and work towards every, each and every year. Charlotte County is also already back in class, and Sarasota County, of course, begins school on Monday. Sarasota County commissioners are considering whether or not to limit the number of events that are held downtown. Last night, commissioners voted to draft two proposals to be presented in public hearings this fall. One would prohibit any events that require more than five blocks to be shut down. The other would require such events be examined first and approved by the commission. That's according to the Sarasota Herald Tribune. There would be an exemption for parades and half street closures like those used for the half marathon races. In Palmetto, city commissioners are already thinking ahead to Next 4th of July, Commissioner Tambra Varnadora has been pushing to make the city's 4th of July celebration more kid and family friendly. According to the Bradenton Herald, she says the concert, the, the concerts that the city already plans are not geared towards family and there are not enough events that focus on children. Other commissioners suggest splitting up the celebration, focusing more on children during the day and then switching more to adults at night. The Community Redevelopment Agency, which sponsors this event, says it can look into where it can redirect investments to make it more accommodating for families. Well, I think splitting up the day kind of does make it a little bit more family makes sense. friendly. Get the kids out in the afternoon. Fourth yeah. of July is so hard here because you yeah. want to go out and do things, but it's so hot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And you're always dodging showers and thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. Right. Which always happens. Um, although we got off without pretty much of a hitch this year. We're looking at uh, some again this afternoon, showers and thunderstorms around. Some of them could be some pretty strong thunderstorms as well. We'll talk about that in a second. Thanks, John. And it's been a record-breaking week for guns found in luggage at airports. We'll tell you what TSA officials say is the reason coming up. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. Whether you're a homeowner looking for a professional installation or a contractor looking for top quality products, Sarasota Glass & Mirror can meet your every need. For 42 years, Sarasota Glass & Mirror has been the area's premier supplier and installer of quality glass products for your home or business. As an authorized PGT WinGuard dealer, we know how to protect your home. With everything from the PGT WinGuard impact resistant windows and doors to shower enclosures and decorative mirrors, the Sarasota Glass & Mirror team has the knowledge to tackle any project. Just because someone grows older, does that mean they have to grow apart from their friends or from the things they love to do? With Right at Home, it doesn't. Right at Home's professional team thoughtfully selects caregivers to help with personal care, housekeeping, meals, and most of all, staying engaged in life. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Are you ready to go? Oh, I sure am. We can provide the right care right at home. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com.
ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. I'm Alan Cohn, redeveloping the Colony Resort. Demolition is underway on Longboat Key, but what will it take to build new condos on the property? Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Using baby powder or talc may lead to ovarian cancer. $72 million was awarded in a recent talc lawsuit after lawyers found secret internal documents showing that the baby powder manufacturer knew about the link between talc and powder and ovarian cancer for decades but never told the public. If you were diagnosed with ovarian cancer after using talc and powder on a regular basis, you may qualify for a cash award. Call 800-793-6621. 800-793-6621. Now, the official Suncoast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. Air temperature coming in about where it was yesterday, almost exactly where it was yesterday at 79 degrees, 75 the uh, dew point temperature. And we have an east wind blowing it at about 6. That east wind, of course, key to the forecast again today, taking showers from the other coast and slinging them back in this direction. We have 78 degrees in Wachula, Arcadia, Mayaka, Parrish, Bradenton, Lakewood Ranch, Northport. Pretty uniform temperatures as it is with an easterly wind flow where you have it coming at you over land as opposed to over water. You have a tendency to have a, a fairly uniform temperature structure from inland to coast. 79 degrees in Venice, 79 in Inglewood. A little bit, little bit warmer on Longboat Key at 81 degrees right on the coastline there. We have this easterly wind flow, which is again very visible in our radar echoes. We'll see those bring showers and thunderstorms at us. Uh, as we head into the eh, probably two, three o'clock hour, we'll start to see a few work their way in. And then probably around five, six, seven o'clock, they'll hit the coastline, explode, and give us better chances of uh, more widespread rainfall like yesterday. We'll look at a uh, pretty quiet morning commute. But again, it'll be another warm one with those winds coming at us over land. They have plenty of time to heat up before bringing uh, those warm air temperatures into our neck of the woods. Had many places hit or tie a record yesterday. 95 in Tampa, 96 in Sarasota. We had some warm temperatures down uh, in Venice and in uh, Fort Myers. And that'll kick off the showers and thunderstorms, but the best place to see the rainfall, at least the heaviest of the rainfall, will be in the southern tip of the state along the eastern uh, coastline. If you're heading to Miami, Lauderdale, Florida Keys, you're likely to see some fairly heavy rainfall down there, starting earlier on and carrying on throughout the afternoon and into the early evening hours as well. We have standard kind of thunderstorm variety stuff shaping up for us around the bottom half of that high pressure ridge that sits to the north. It's been sitting there for quite a while and will continue to provide us with this easterly flow through today, tomorrow, and probably right straight through until Friday. At that point, We'll start to see a wind reversal. Winds will lighten up a little bit. The high pressure ridge will sink a bit further south. And we'll start to get a westerly wind flow in the opposite direction where our winds will be blowing for the next three or four days. That means morning showers near the coast, followed by everything moving inland in the afternoon and a drier evening sunset period. But not today. Today, the east wind will rule. We'll get sun, thin clouds, inland storms that drift to the coastline as they die out at times heavy. The RPM computer model verifies that. Showers coming at us from inland areas producing at times some fairly heavy rainfall. Lots of lightning strikes. That'll be our major threat again today is the lightning strikes. And then tomorrow we'll do it all again with another round of showers coming at us from inland areas drifting to the coast. Some of them could be heavy. Not severe necessarily. The severe weather will be in a different part of the country, up into the north and east. If you're traveling to anywhere from the corridors of the uh, Del Marva on up through down east Maine, you have the potential of some airport delays due to weather. East wind shifts southwest with a sea breeze in the afternoon. Look for a light chop on your bay and inland waters and a 50% chance of rain showers today, tomorrow, the next day. As we head into the weekend, we'll lower that rain chance down to about 30%, and they'll mostly be morning showers. Back to you. Thanks, John. As far as the roadways this morning at 619, Palmetto Bridge is looking pretty normal at this point in the morning. Green Bridge is starting to see that volume picking up southbound into Bradenton. 
41 and 301 though are clear and so is the interstate. As far as Sarasota roadways, a couple of hot spots just on the arteries out to 75. That's normal though as you get off the interstate there at Fruitville and a little bit of a a little slow spot there on Clark Road heading towards the interstate. Could be just an, an intersection there or a light. But no accidents so far on our roadways to slow you down. And as far as Venice and Northport and South County, everything is moving along nicely there as well. Well, each community on the Sun Coast has its own unique personality. And this morning in our series, A Place We Call Home, we see yet another one. That's right. ABC 7's Linda Carson takes us to Sarasota's Southside Village. Sarasota Memorial Hospital was built in 1925. In 1927, Slee's Grocery Store was built nearby. There was a wooden building on the corner of the Hillview and Osprey. And then the Marable family, uh, Eddie and Ethel Marable, bought it from him in uh, 1941. And then in 1950, they built the uh, foundation that we're standing on today. Other stores soon sprung up. The drugstore was built. We had a, across the street, we had a bakery and a hardware store, a dress shop. Uh, we had a, a Sarge's TV, we had a plumbing store, and over where they opened Veronica's, there was the, our uh, uh, Ben Franklin 5 and 10 store. The Morton family arrived in 1951. My dad went to work here with Mr. Marable, Mrs. Marable back in uh, 1952. And then uh, he and I bought the store after I graduated from college in uh, 1969. So he, he worked for the Marable family for 17 years prior to us, us buying the market. Morton's Gourmet Market opened in 1969. Sarah Massey remembers going there when she was a student at Southside Elementary School. We could walk up to Morton's, but at that time we actually had a little account that you would just come in and purchase your sandwich or uh, your lunch and sign off on your account and walk home. Many homes in Southside Village are very close to the stores and restaurants. It's a selling point for a lot of the homes in the Harbor Acres, Cherokee Park, Palm Park area. And Southside School, especially with all the young families, uh, Southside School is such a good elementary school that uh, they want to live close to the school, they want to live close to the hospital and the doctors. This is definitely an upscale real estate area. There are lots that are with tear down homes in here that are 500,000. So that's kind of the, I would say, probably the entry point for the neighborhood. And you might even still have to tear a home down. Um, after that. Southside Village even has its own newspaper. It's their free private monthly neighborhood magazine that they write themselves. She says the goal is to get neighbors to know each other and to appreciate what a great place this is to call home. It's walkable, it's friendly, there are plenty of things to do, places to get to very easily such as the beach and downtown area. Southside Village has been a part of Sarasota since the 1920s and it continues to thrive and grow and to be a great place to call home. Linda Carson, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. And it's still growing. A lot of new restaurants oh, popping up there these days. I like it. It's quaint over there. Very much so. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast. Coming up, one of three girls who fell off of a Ferris wheel at a county fair in Tennessee last week now speaking out about her experience. We'll hear what she has to say about what actually happened coming up next. It's Lincoln Summer Sales Event here at Alex Karras Lincoln. Drive a brand new 2017 Lincoln MKZ for only $299 per month or a 2016 Lincoln MKX, Lincoln's premium sports utility vehicle for $339 per month. We also have a great selection of certified pre-owned vehicles. Drive with the confidence of a six-year, 100,000-mile comprehensive warranty and complimentary roadside assistance. Alex Karras Lincoln, family owned and operated and winner of the prestigious 2015 President's Award. We are located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US 41. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. The official salon of ABC7.
have an idea for a new product or invention? Hi, I'm George Foreman. People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can provide patent referrals and submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee your company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. For your free inventor's information, call 1-800-890-1946. That's 1-800-890-1946. A message from the Pulaski Law Firm. You started there right out of high school, learned your trade and did it well. And the asbestos you handled, well, that was just part of the job. If you worked in the trades and were diagnosed with mesothelioma, get the best care available, then call us. You may be entitled to financial compensation without ever going to court. Call 800-236-4994. And see how we can help. Mesothelioma, don't fight it alone. It's time to upgrade your favorite news app. Now, ABC7's My Suncoast News app is better than ever with a dynamic brand new design that's faster and easier to use. Stay connected with new features that make it easy to submit photos, share stories on Facebook and Twitter, and save stories for reading at a later time. Download our free My Suncoast News app on your mobile device at your app store. ABC7's all-new My Suncoast News app. Just another way we're here for you. Powered by the I Associates, providing sight for life. Welcome back at 627. One of the victims in a Ferris wheel accident now speaking out about what happened. And she's one of three young girls who fell from their gondola last week and plummeted more than 30 feet to the ground. ABC Steve Osun Sami has exclusive details. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, 10 year old Kayla Reynolds tells us she is lucky to be alive after falling nearly 40 feet from the cabin of this Ferris wheel at the Greene County Fair in Tennessee. I was really scared, but mostly for my sister. She tells us about the moment when she, another girl, and her six-year-old sister, Briley, were thrown to the ground after their orange Ferris wheel basket got caught on another while the ride was turning. First thing I've ever seen in my life, and I couldn't do anything. In a statement this morning, the company that runs the Ferris wheel is responding to the accident in Tennessee. By no means do we take this lightly as our main concern is the safety of the families who visit our Midway each week. And it can happen to anybody. We'll have more on this emotional interview coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Steve Osinsami, ABC News, Johnson City, Tennessee. We do believe my boy used to have food sensitivities, but then we fed him Blue Basics, and he's never looked or felt better. If your dog has food sensitivities, it's time to try limited ingredient Blue Basics. How do you like your coffee? Mornings are a necessary evil, but that doesn't mean they can't taste like caramels and macchiatos. I like an international, and I expect to be delighted. When you ache and haven't slept, you're not you. Tylenol PM relieves pain and helps you fall fast asleep and stay asleep. We give you a better night. You are a better you all day. Tylenol. She after our liquid gold. Whoa, she better not be. I clean run straight down to the gluten-free stuffing. It's gluten. There's gold in their shells. Liquid gold. Welcome back, two of my favorite guests, Cash 3 and Play 4. Surprise! We're Pick 3 and Pick 4 now! Whoa! But we still play exactly the same. We just got a fresh new look. Speaking of surprises, I have one for you. Say hello to Pick 2 and Pick 5! <laughs> Introducing the complete Pick family of games! Yeah. We're family now! The new Pick 2 and Pick 5 have joined Pick 3 and Pick 4 to give you more choices in your daily gameplay. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. 
On Saturday, September 10th, thousands will walk together at Nathan Benderson Park for the 2016 Suncoast Heart Walk. I'm Scott Dennis, ABC7. Join us for an inspiring, fun-filled day as we raise funds, celebrate survivors, and honor loved ones lost. The Suncoast Heart Walk is the American Heart Association's premier event to fight cardiovascular diseases. The 2016 Suncoast Heart Walk, September 10th, for more information, visit suncoastheartwalk.org and take the first steps towards living a heart-healthy life. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. If you're one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, I have an important message. You may be entitled to receive disability benefits through Social Security. You'll be matched up with an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, deal with Social Security for you, and handle all appeals and hearings. Best of all, there are no upfront fees, so you pay nothing until you receive your benefits. Call the Citizens Disability Helpline today for a free, no obligation consultation. Attention blood clot filter patients. Surgically implanted blood clot filters are potentially life-threatening. Some filters are prone to breaking, resulting in pieces of the filter moving through the body and causing internal bleeding. If you had surgery to implant a blood clot filter, you may be entitled to a cash award, even if you haven't suffered side effects yet. Call the Gold Shield Group now, 888-747-5291, to see if you qualify for a cash award, 888-747-5291. Attention breast cancer survivors. If you experience permanent hair loss or baldness after chemotherapy, you may qualify for a cash award. Thousands of women suffering breast cancer were given a chemotherapy drug without being warned about the possibility of irreversible alopecia. If you or a loved one suffered permanent hair loss after chemotherapy, call 888-622-8732. Time to file a claim is limited. 888-622-8732. That's 888-622-8732. This is important news for women diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Talcum powder may have caused your ovarian cancer. According to many studies, long-term use of talcum powder in products such as baby powder or shower to shower for feminine hygiene is linked directly to ovarian cancer. If you are an ovarian cancer victim or if a loved one died from ovarian cancer after using talcum powder, call the law offices of Davis and Crump at the number below right now to find out if you are eligible for a cash award and medical expenses. Call now. Coming up on Good Morning Sun Coast, as wildfires continue to burn in the West, authorities close in on the cause of a fire that spread to thousands of acres. But state officials are reaching out for more help to fight the Zika outbreak in South Florida. And could the Olympics be to blame for a false alarm that led to evacuations at John F. Kennedy Airport? We'll take a look. Live from the ABC 7 studios. This is Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. Welcome back. I'm Rebecca Vargas. And I'm Stephanie Roberts. John Brennan enjoying some time off this week. Thanks for joining us this morning. Off to another warm and humid start. One of those days where you walk outside and you're like, oh, no better at 5 a.m. versus yeah. 5 p.m. And the air conditioner is cranking 24 7 I heard yeah. it actually yep. this morning running at 5 a.m. Yeah, I thought, absolutely. oh, that's expensive. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. <laughs> um, you know what? I, I think we'll probably see these warm temperatures continue for the next I would say three or four or five days, and then we'll get a little bit of a break. Uh, okay. We'll get a wind shift that'll help to kind of quiet things down just a little bit. But as long as we got this easterly wind, Oof. it's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. We had 96 yesterday here in Sarasota, and we'll probably hit 93, 94 degrees as a daytime high again this afternoon. The east wind very visible here on our uh, radar imagery. You can see the echoes moving in at us from Atlantic waters. Those will be getting here probably around uh, 1, 2 o'clock, and then we'll start to see some of those showers beginning to build in inland areas at about a 50% rate. They'll gradually drift to the coastline, bringing us an evening chance of rainfall for everyone along the coast after a daytime high has been reached of around, as I mentioned, 93, 94 degrees. Complete forecast coming up in a few. All right, looks good. Thank you, John. As John mentioned, we are not looking at any rain showers right now for the morning commute. That does help things on the roadways, building volume in Bradenton, but no major slowdowns. 41301, I-75 looking good through Manatee County. We do have a new accident popping up on the maps, though, as we head into South Bradenton and into Sarasota County. That wreck looks like it is showing up uh, off State Route 70 there. If we can zoom in, it is on 53rd Street 
eastbound. So the good news is it is uh, off the beaten path a little bit with the stalled vehicle at Lockwood Ridge. Does not appear to be causing any problems at this time. Fruitville Bee Ridge and Clark Roads moving just fine. The typical building volume heading uh, to and from the expressways. I-75 and 41 accident free in South Sarasota County. On topping our news this half hour, more details in the severe flooding impacting Louisiana right now. Rivers and flood ravaged Louisiana are expected to crest today. That could lead to even more evacuations. At least six rivers there have already hit record flood levels. Seven people have been killed, while thousands of others evacuated. A local sheriff carrying a baby, helping lead families out of rising water. And also you are seeing dramatic rescues there from cars. Locals with boats are being called the Volunteer Cajun Navy. We're trying to do whatever we can in our, uh, in our time of crisis and disaster, so this is time for everybody to pull together if they can. In all, more than 20,000 people have been rescued, some plucked by the Coast Guard chopper. 11,000 are now reportedly staying in shelters. Three-quarters of property owners in Louisiana do not have flood insurance. Well, in California, a state of emergency has now been declared in one county, and FEMA has approved the state's request for a fire management assistant grant. That is all as the wildfires there continue to spread. CNN's Reed Binion reports. California residents cheering the news of an arrest in the Clayton wildfire. Earlier today, Cal Fire investigators, along with Lake County Sheriff's detectives, with the assistance of the Lake County District Attorney's Office, were able to arrest Mr. Pashilk on 17 counts of arson. Authorities say they suspect the man may have also been connected to several fires in Lake County over the past year. Despite having a suspect in custody, the battle against the fire is a tough one, according to Cal Fire's Daniel Berlant. Every time firefighters would go in to try to attack the blaze, another home would, would ignite on fire, and that was the scene, domino effect, uh, for several hours last night. The Clayton fire began Saturday. Berlant saying the California's long drought contributed to its fast growth. Conditions are critically dry and this fire was able to, to really grow in size. By Monday, it was covering 4,000 acres and just 5% contained. And while many residents may be happy about the arrest, many more are coping with the loss of their homes. More than 4,000 people had been evacuated as of Monday night, with the blaze destroying 175 structures, including homes, businesses, and properties. It was worse than what they were showing on TV, honestly. Yeah, it's all gone. I'm Reed Binion reporting. An unsettling report this morning for those who have been traveling this week. The TSA says the number of firearms found in carry-on bags at airports across this country this week alone has broken records. Between August 5th and the 11th, the TSA discovered 78 guns. Of those, 68 were loaded and 21 had a round in the chamber. The previous record was 74, which was set in May. The TSA says in many cases, travelers simply forgot they had weapons with them. But besides firearms, TSA agents found a knife inside a pill bottle in San Francisco and four replica grenades were found in the past week as well. An update now on the reports of gunfire that caused two terminals to be evacuated at JFK Airport Sunday night. Authorities are looking at whether or not the Olympics could be to blame for this false alarm. A document from the New York Police Department says some patrons at the airport started to act extremely disruptive after watching the Olympics. The first calls to 911 about gunshots being fired came in at the same time Usain Bolt won the 100-meter dash. Investigation determined those reports were unfounded. Investigators are now interviewing witnesses and reviewing surveillance footage to try to figure out what caused the chaos. Mm. That's not the kind of chaos or celebration we want to have for a positive yeah. thing. No. Well, we're also nervous about and, Yeah, in the airport, I do attack, feel like you're kind of on edge nowadays. Yeah, very uh, much you know, so. Probably with good reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. I guess. They said that the odds of dying in a terrorist attack are about one in 20 million. So right. <laughs> I think that lightning big, strikes more often than yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Right, <laughs> exactly. You're, we'll walk out in thunderstorms all the time. Without even thinking. Showers and thunderstorms, speaking of which, are in the forecast once again. We'll talk about that after the break. My dad is my hero, and I wanted to give him a chance to live life and be happy. Granny Nanny's has been a huge help. It has contributed to the health and happiness of my dad, for sure. A helping hand and a gentle heart. 
At Sunset Subaru in Sarasota, we make sure you get the most for your money. More years, more miles, and when you're ready to sell, you'll get more money back. Come fall in love with the longest lasting vehicle in its class, the Subaru Outback. Or lease a new 2017 Subaru Forester for just $209 a month. Or get 0% financing right now during the Subaru A Lot to Love event. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. So many possibilities worth exploring. Minnesota flooring. Looking for carpet? Look no further. Minnesota flooring has smart strand carpet as low as $1.79 per square foot. Installed, no add ons or extras. Unbelievable? Minnesota flooring can have in stock carpet installed in your home in 48 hours for as low as $1.99 per square foot. Don't miss these prices. Visit Minnesota flooring today. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. We promise we're more than a dealership. We're a destination with a movie theater, massage room, aquarium, cafe, and more. We promise to give you top dollar for your trade, even if you don't buy from us. And if you do, we promise you the best deal. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Granny Nannies, we've been making house calls for over 25 years. When you need home health care services, there really is no place like home. Grandma! A helping hand and a gentle heart. ABC 7's My Sun Coast News app is better than ever with a brand new design that's faster and easier to use. Download our free My Sun Coast News app on your mobile device at your app store of choice. Powered by the I Associates, providing sight for life. Today at 4 on Sun Coast View. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Sun Coast View. We celebrate National Rum Day with award winning Siesta Key Rum, plus making math more fun and spice and tea exchange in the kitchen. Today at 4 on Sun Coast View. Now, the official Sun Coast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. Beautiful shot on Tower Cam this morning. Gorgeous, gorgeous view of a little bit of sun glint as the dawn breaks on the Sun Coast. Beautiful blue sky back there as well. You notice that. Kind of a stable environment during these morning hours. Don't expect much in the way of rainfall, but boy, wait. Later on, we'll see those showers and thunderstorms begin to blossom. Taking a look at uh, current conditions outside, it's about where we were yesterday at this hour. 79 degree air temperature, dew point is at 75. East wind continues to blow at about uh, six, seven miles per hour. You know what? That east wind is going to be really key to how warm we get today. That and how soon the clouds begin to approach us. 77 degrees in our uh, Wachula, Arcadia, Mayaca, 78 in Bradenton, Parish, Lakewood Ranch, 77 in Northport, Punta Gorda, 78 in Venice and Inglewood. When you get that wind out of the east coming in over land, it just warms and warms and warms on its way from east coast to west coast. And so by the time it gets here, it really helps to kind of boost our afternoon temperatures, as we saw yesterday when we hit 96 degrees. Lots of rainfall over on the other coast already sprinkling from Jacksonville all the way down toward the Keys and all of that gradually drifting in this direction. Currently, everything's very quiet here locally. Don't see any rain falling yet, but that will change probably just after the lunchtime hour. We'll see a few scattered showers begin to build and first Arcadia, Wachula, Ona, and then we'll see those storms gradually drift to the coastline, hit our sea breeze front, that collision will cause rising air and make some storms pretty strong with some frequent lightning pops.
If you look at where the rainfall is expected today to be the heaviest and the most widespread, it is going to be in the southern tip of the state where that onshore flow first appears. And it's also the place where the moisture is thickest from about Lauderdale south down through the Florida Keys. High pressure to the north of us continues to direct our winds out of the east. That's why we've had those winds persistent over the last several days. That's also why there's been such heavy, heavy rainfall back to the west. Louisiana Delta region, as we well know, now Texas seeing some fairly heavy rainfall. All of it because this high pressure ridge kind of blocking any eastward motion of those systems back to the west. So we'll continue on with that easterly wind flow for the next several days, giving us the same sort of pattern. Showers and thunderstorms starting inland later in the afternoon, then drifting to the coast as we head into the sunset hours. But by the time we get to the weekend, we'll watch this wind out of the east completely reverse itself and come at us out of the west. And we know that when we get a west wind in the summer, it means morning showers near the coast, and then everything moves inland and we're left with a very sunny afternoon. And that'll be the case, I think, both Saturday and Sunday. So the weekend's shaping up to be pretty nice for outdoor activities. Sun, then clouds, afternoon storms drift uh, slowly to the west in the afternoon with those showers. That's the forecast highlights for the next probably three, four days. The RPM computer model shows those showers building and then gradually drifting out into Gulf waters where they will die out. That'll be the case today. That'll be the case for the next several days. Winds are generally always going to be out of the east for the next three or four days and then turn a little bit to the southwest in the afternoon at about 10 knots. It'll bring you a light chop and two foot seas. Pretty decent boating day for the first half of the day anyway. Watch the evening hours though as those thunderstorms move out into Gulf Waters Mariners. Forecast high temperatures probably around between 93 and 95 degrees each and every day for the next several days then slightly cooler as we head into the weekend. Back to you. Thanks John. As far as your commute right now at 646 seeing a couple problems now in Manatee Con County causing some slowdowns. There is an accident being reported at 41 business there and that's 9th Street southbound. The accident is at Manatee Ave off State Road 64. So it is causing some major slowdowns if you are coming south out of downtown into Bradenton there into Manatee County. As far as State Road 70 there, we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown as you pass 301 heading westbound. No accidents to report there. The interstate is clear. So is 41 and the arteries out to 75. We're not seeing any issues in Sarasota County, even as you head down into South Sarasota County, where Venice and Northport roadways are moving smoothly at this point in the morning. Well, in the fight against Zika this morning, state officials are now enlisting commercial pest control companies in hopes of stopping mosquitoes from spreading the virus in South Florida. Governor Rick Scott says that health officials will send additional pest control companies to Miami-Dade County to help mosquito control operations there. 30 people in Florida are believed to have been infected by the virus through mosquito bites. Scott says Florida's Department of Health believes active transmissions are limited to a zone encompassing Miami's Wynwood neighborhood. Wow, that's scary. That is scary. And now yeah. they're saying that they're worried about that where the rains have happened in Louisiana because mm -hmm. now of all that standing, standing water, water with the flooding, that Zika mosquitoes may, uh, may surface there. And that's where they breed. So hopefully they can get a handle on that. Well, we go to the doctor when we're sick, but new research is showing that not enough men go to the doctor to receive preventative care or even know when they should be screened. Yeah, it's that old stereotype, but it just may be true. In a survey done by Cleveland Clinic, only one-third of men knew that screening for colon cancer begins at age 50 or sooner for those who might be considered high risk. There's also confusion among men when it comes to prostate cancer screenings. Those also should begin at age 50. If you are in a high risk situation, all screenings should begin at 45. More than half the men surveyed believe that heart screening tests begin at 40 or older and that blood pressure screenings start at 35. But actually, both heart and blood pressure screenings should start at age 20. We see cardiac disease now uh, as a growing problem in much younger men than we used to see it. So it's very important that they get uh, at least uh, an initial blood pressure and some, some screening at 20. It is also a good idea for everyone to have their cholesterol checked. It's recommended that anyone over age 20 be checked at least every five years. In many cases, an issue can be caught and treated early. That's versus having to deal with a significant health issue later on in life. In entertainment news, Lynn manuel Miranda has had enough of ticket scalpers. Wow, the Hamilton creator is now teaming up with New York Senator Chuck Schumer to work on the 
Act. The legislation would keep, or Bots Act, it would keep automated programs called ticket bots from buying tickets online and selling them for higher prices. Those who use the programs could face fines of up to $16,000 per ticket. These fines could apply to Broadway tickets or other live events. And according to Ticketmaster, about 60% of online tickets for popular shows are snatched up by bots as soon as they're available. The Brightonton Area Convention and Visitors Bureau is looking to bring more families to the area, so they're teaming up with Legoland and Visit Tampa Bay for public relations efforts. Staff with Visit Tampa Bay tell the Herald Tribune that they all have complimentary destinations so that families can visit the amusement parks in Tampa and Winter Haven and then be directed to our Manatee County beaches. Makes sense. Legoland and the Bradenton Bureau are discussing joining together for media events to promote Florida tourism all over the Northeast and those other cold parts of the country. Long live the king of rock and roll, Graceland is now announcing its biggest and most significant expansion in its history, a new $45 million entertainment complex. Elvis past, present, and future is under construction right now across the street from Elvis's mansion in Graceland, and it will be five times the size of the visitor center and will showcase interactive pop culture experiences. This complex will open in the spring of 2017, and I'm sure Elvis fans are really excited about it. Absolutely. Yeah. I've still never been to Me any either. of the Memphis or Graceland or any of that whole could be cool. experience. So, yeah, yeah, more and more reason to go there. Yep. Estelle Head on Good Morning Sunco. Man's best friend has found a new companion. We'll show you the unlikely friendship one dog has found. Stay with us. Welcome to the all-new Seymour Buick GMC on the island of Venice. Seymour smiles. Seymour selection of quality new and pre-owned vehicles. Seymour for your trade-in. Seymour savings. Discover the new Buick and get cash back for up to 16% of the MSRP on select 2016 Buick vehicles. That's nearly 8,000 cash back on this Buick LaCrosse. See more now at Seymour Buick GMC on the island of Venice. Go to SeymourBuickGMC.com. Hurricane season is here, so when severe weather threatens, count on the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We bring you storm warnings faster and with more detail than ever before. And track storms right down to your neighborhood. On air, online, and on your mobile device, turn to the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. ABC7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Are you one of the many Americans who undergo CPAP or BiPAP therapy? How often are you replacing your masks and hoses? Replacing your CPAP or BiPAP supplies every three to six months is critical to an effective therapy. Bacteria will build up, making you sick, and worn out straps cause leaks and are just plain uncomfortable. Let Allied Medical Supply Network help. Call Allied Medical to speak to an expert agent that will determine which supplies you need and will set up a schedule for your fresh brand name supplies to be delivered right to your door right when you need them. Shipping's absolutely free and you may qualify to receive supplies at little or no cost to you. That's right, there's no driving around town or remembering when to order. Call Allied Medical Supply Network today and rest easy. Call 800-601-0658. That's 800-601-0658. Attention breast cancer survivors. If you experience permanent hair loss or baldness after chemotherapy, you may qualify for a cash award. Thousands of women suffering breast cancer were given a chemotherapy drug without being warned about the possibility of irreversible alopecia. If you or a loved one suffered permanent hair loss after chemotherapy, call 888-622-8732. Time to file a claim is limited. 888-622-8732. That's 888-622-8732. A message from the Pulaski Law Firm. For decades, many Americans working in the trades were exposed to environmental hazards without their knowledge. While the dangers of one such airborne threat, asbestos, have long been known, efforts were made to hide the risks from the public. The result? Thousands of cases of asbestos-induced mesothelioma. Those in the trades may have been harmed by hundreds of companies who produced asbestos-laden products. The U.S. Bankruptcy Court has established asbestos trusts with $30 billion in initial funding. You may be entitled to financial compensation without ever going to court. If you or someone you know has been diagnosed with mesothelioma, get the best care available. 
then call us. Call 800-279-1837. For nearly two decades, we've been fighting for those harmed by asbestos. Act now. Call for a free consultation and see how we can help. Mesothelioma. Don't fight it alone. Welcome back at 654. Your roadways are seeing some slowdown so far in Manatee County. That's where we're seeing an accident southbound at 41 there at 9th Street in the downtown area at Manatee Avenue just as you're coming out heading south. So it's causing some major slowdown right now. Also, 14th Street is partially blocked there at Manatee Avenue as well. The Green Bridge is probably your best bet this morning. The interstate is clear as well, so that's a great route to take into Sarasota. I'm not seeing any issues on 41 or the arteries out to 75. And we're accident and delay free in South Sarasota County. Showers and thunderstorms each and every day for the next several days in the afternoon gradually drift from inland areas toward the coastline. We have a storm brewing off the coast of Africa. Shouldn't bother everyone, anyone. And then as we head into the weekend, we'll lower our rain chances just a bit. All right, and it's the unlikeliest of friendships here. Man's best friend may have saved one dog's life. George lost his best friend, Blackie the Lab, two years ago this week. And since then, he's been very depressed because dogs need friends too. His owner said he stopped eating and he's been getting very sick. But lately, she noticed something hanging out on her back porch, a duck who has now not left George's side. George lets the duck sleep on his bed, and he even oh. allows the duck to rest its bill on his leg. And that George's mom so was cute. nice to let the duck inside yeah. because he's not house trained. Yeah, <laughs> that was still, really sweet of her. The dog needed a friend. That so even man's best friend needs a best friend. Yeah. House. It is amazing to see how how your pets react though to someone being sick or to the loss of someone in the family. So right, it's he, sweet. He needed a friend, a duck and a dog. Who would have thought? Well, stick around. Good morning, America is coming up next. Hope that brightened up your morning. We will see you tomorrow.